Hi, welcome back to Chem with Go. Today we'll take a look at percent error and a little bit of a statistical analysis with regards to what uh, the percent error value tells you about your results from your experiment. Now let's identify a few things. A happens to be the accepted value. Okay, and then that's A over here, and that's A in this numerator of your equation as well. And think about the accepted value as the target value. This is what you're supposed to get okay, from your experiment. Um, and then when you do the experiment, M happens to be your measured value. So after some stoichiometric analysis, M is the result from your experiment. And then you plug it into this equation and then multiply by 100 to get a percent. Now, note that I didn't put the absolute value um, uh, notation into the equation. Some textbooks will go ahead and put the absolute value of these two terms, of this uh, sort of uh, um, term right here, and I'll underline that. And the reason why is because I want you to be able to explain to me what happened in the experiment if the percent error is positive or if the percent error is negative. So I don't want you guys to eliminate the negative sign if there happens to be a negative sign. Now, uh, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a simple sort of result from an experiment. So here's my flask. And let's say you did your psychometric calculations before your experiment, and you were supposed to obtain 2.00 grams of your material right here inside the flask. That's what you're supposed to get, and that's your target value. Now, let's say you did the experiment, and uh, instead of collecting exactly 2 grams, you got a little bit less. Let's say you got about 1.85 grams. That happens to be your measured value. Okay. Now, what would be the percent error for your experiment? Well, you'd plug all those values in. Again, this would be A, okay, and this would be N. So let's plug those values in. So 2 0, 0 grams minus 1.85 divided by 2. So 2 times 100. All right, now, when we subtract the numerator, we'll get a 0 0.15 grams. Now, note that because uh, we have to keep track of significant figures, this is good to the nearest hundredth of a gram, this is good to the nearest hundredth, so our answer should be nearest to the nearest hundredth of a gram. We need to go ahead and divide this by 2. 0 0.00, multiply that by 100. So if we go ahead and plug that into our calculators, divide by 2, and multiply by 100, so we get a value of a positive 7.5%. Okay, so that's our percent error for, the, uh, for our experiment. Now, two significant figures in my numerator over here, that means I should have two significant figures in my answer. Now, what does the value tell us when it says 7.5%? Now, because this is a positive value, that tells us that our measured value is less than our accepted value. Okay? Again, one more time. Because this is a positive value, that tells us that our measured value happens to be less than the accepted value. Now, I want you guys to think about that. Okay? And this is part of the error analysis. Uh, after the experiment and part of the de debriefing after the experiment. What would cause you to have less of your uh, experimental result okay, than what you were supposed to get? And there could be so many different reasons, but I want you guys to be able to sort of uh, explain that in your conclusions and questions at the end of every experiment. How would this value, okay, why is this less than this value right here. Uh, and, you know, for every experiment, it's going to be a little bit different. But one of the things may be because uh, you lost some product along the way. Maybe you didn't uh, measure correctly. Maybe the instruments were wrong, and we call that instrument error and so forth. But we want to minimize instrument error as much as possible. Okay? All right. And that's a simple sort of explanation of what percent error is and how you're going to use that um, uh, or how to calculate that for your experiments and then how to analyze the data from your experimental results, right? And we'll see you in the next lecture.